And so I'll start again, if you don't mind. So I'm so excited to be here with you, to be on this beautiful planet, to be doing this work with you, to be one with you, to be in this beautiful family. We are letting go of the old self that was very selfish and that really was stuck in this, you know, old paradigm of gain and, you know, keeping stuff for ourselves instead of just giving, giving, giving and giving. And the world loves when we give because then we also receive. This is beyond, you know, the monetary system. We are going to be moving to that beautiful design of divine reciprocity. And so for me, you know, this journey started when I was a little kid, very little kid. And so I know that we have been prepared for this and that this lifetime is so very special and that all of us are here just to being so in love, so in joy. And things are just going to get better as we assist each other to come to this beautiful realization of who we truly are. So we are letting go of the false self. We are letting go of the selfish self. We are letting go of the judgmental self. We are letting go of the disconnected self. And I shared some tools yesterday. Again, I'll post it on YouTube so that we can every day, you know, re-listen if we need to, because some of the stuff is just coming, you know, kind of spontaneously directly from Divine Mother as she is with us here. I wanted to bring her in a little bit. I found a beautiful, beautiful painting by a German Ukrainian artist. You can find her art. You can see her name here um, on Fine Art America, which is one of the great platforms when you find beautiful art. And so uh, this is how Lakshmi appeared to me the other day. And so I want to bring her in exactly as she was. And so this is just so beautiful to know that she always is here with us. And this is exactly what she looked like. I mean, this is the closest I could find. I looked at every picture of Lakshmi, but this is the one. And so let's take a look at what's unfolding here on planet Earth. It just was a very big morning for me right now. Uh, so the way that we live, right? Weekends are so wonderful because it reminds us of this beautiful flow, this beautiful flow that we used to know. In Mu, at the beginning of creation, where we came into bodies and our bodies were so much more multidimensional, we had the rainbow bodies, we were surrounded by a rainbow. That's why a rainbow was really worshipped by us in Mu. And when I say us, I mean you and me, because this is not a coincidence that we are here right now again. And so we were constantly watching the flow of the rainbow. And it was not the rainbow in the sky that we know today, but it was the rainbow light that surrounds us. It was the magnetism of our being. It was the magnetism of the earth. It was also the magnetism that was coming to us from source. And so we had a name because we were making a few sounds. We didn't need language like we need today because language became completely, you know, to me, a lot of the things that we say are unnecessary. And we will be moving into being more and more like beings who just make sound if we want to create through sound, but being more silent and more telepathic, of course. So that's how we were. But we did have a sound for source and we call source Tewa. And I know I mentioned this before, I put it in the chat again, Tewa. And so, you know, I remembered all of these things. And then one day, my husband and I, we were in New Mexico, just traveling, going to the ancient sites. And we found that there are language groups that are called among the native people Tewa. There are language groups of the native people who spoke the Tewa language. And I thought it was very entertaining, of course, because, you know, it all has to match. None of this should be, you know, something that we just make up. It should be, you know, factual. And then, of course, we want to then use that knowledge to help us move through this change on planet Earth that is taking place. And so because we knew how the energy flows, we were able to completely work with that energy. And that's why we moved with that flow. We never wanted to violate the flow. And the flow to me, this is now in this modern civilization, the life we get to live on the weekend when we don't work to earn money, but we actually just go with our flow. And this flow is very specific. And this is going to be today, we will speak a little bit for maybe for another 15 minutes, and then we will do our service to Mother Earth when we will be working on the realigning of the axis, which our dear sister Myra so beautifully recorded for us with beautiful music that we added to that. And so this flow is going to be so essential to us once again. We will no longer be doing things because reasonably, that's what we must do, but we will be internally always aligning with the flow that exists around us. Kind of divine will, you know, it's divine will. How she flows is the will of the divine. 
And when we are able to see her once again, I call her the rainbow serpent of creation, we see her within us as consciousness as well that we, you know, for many years called Kundalini. So that's our consciousness. And we want to have awakened consciousness, not dormant, not some kind of coiled serpent at the base of the spine. We want to be fully ignited by the rainbow light within us. And that's only possible when we are in love with life. Big, big life, right? The eternal life, the one where we never are born, never die. The life where we just so, so in love with this amazing creation. Yes, the movie Avatar, you know, that's nice. Gurga, thank you for that. The movie Avatar, Divine Mother told me about it. She said that was our Mu. That was the civilization of Mu. So, you know, it's good to watch that movie too, even though I don't like watching movies, but that one was really good because it's nice to see, you know, that we have beings who remember too. Of course, the ones who make it, they have to remember. They're not just making it up. They're making it from certain consciousness. And so we used to be able to go with the flow at all times. We didn't have duties. We didn't have masts. We didn't have schedule. We didn't have appointments. We didn't have, you know, being on time because we didn't measure time that way. We measured time the cosmic way. And so then we would always be in the flow. It would be life where you just feeling love and love moves you. And so let us do that again in our lives as much as possible, right? We slowly are, you know, waking up from all of this. So it will be more about listening to love within. Now, yesterday I started to speak about pure intent that my guide started to talk to me about. And so this morning I was working with my guides and I was working with Divine Mother because, you know, it's Sunday. It's great. There is no must. It's just like go with the flow. What would love do next? Isn't that beautiful? And again, that's going to be every day for us like that. We just, you know, slowly but surely getting there. We just have to remember that that's how things were meant to be. And so the oppression that was created here on planet Earth was violating the flow of all of us, from most of us. And the only way to get out was to be really rich. That's not the way to do it, right? <laughs> and so instead, it's going to be now, we're going to hear this group will co-create it. I spoke to Divine Mother this morning, and I always like to ask her questions when I'm, you know, in the presence of my husband, so that he then re also receives the answers, because it's really cool, you know, like when I talk to her, I call her in, and then I have a question, and within minutes, she brings the answer, and I love it how it works, you ask, and it is given, this is our new reality now, when we follow the flow of love, when we only love what we do and do what we love we are in the flow <laughs> of this beautiful rainbow light and then she constantly brings us more of what we love you know in this world we have to remember how to do this again you know we got kind of brainwashed for millennia right that's a really big one so now it's about creating from the heart living from the heart letting go of all that is not our true purpose. And our true purpose is always love. It will always feel like love and love will move us. That doesn't mean that we will be lazy, actually, because we are creator beings. Creator beings create and also take a break. That's also important because you can't just be creating, creating, creating without actually a moment of silence, a moment of integration. And so it's about a beautiful flow and it's like the sinus wave. We go up when we create and then we go down to rest and up to create, down to rest, like a beautiful serpent. And so this is the new way. The new way is the way of the Tao. The Tao is the mother. We have to understand what the Tao truly is. It is mother. Taoism is really the teachings of the mother. And I will be teaching everything. Again, I want to organize a little bit the knowledge she gave me the last many years because it's great. You know, we need this knowledge here in this world right now. And we need to just give it freely to everyone and just everyone can, you know, thrive. We want all of us to be fully awake because, you know, when we are not fully awake, we are still in suffering to some degree. 
And when we are not fully awake, we still cause suffering to ourselves through the misuse of life force. But when we just know how to use life force, all of us, that gives me joy. I'm, I'm always so, so happy when we together can do something so amazing, when we together can achieve success, when we together can feel the love that is here available to us, when we can truly live wonderful lives, because that's what it's all about. So I asked Divine Mother, you know, to teach me everything she can this morning because I have questions. How do we do this on a big scale? How do we all of us have the same amazing, open, sacred heart? It is really what our mystics call the sacred heart, the high heart, the heart of hearts, the holy of holies, Divine Mother calls it. And that is the key to this. The key is to open that. And she will give us steps. We will know exactly what to do. But I, this morning, Divine Mother guided me to something. I just cannot believe it. She just told me everything that I needed to do to get to this picture. This picture is a picture from Sufi, you know, Sufism, of course, not a great tradition. You know, Rumi, Sufism, that's how my Kundalini awakened is through doing the spinning with the Sufi for seven days. Just seven days. That, that was it. That's all it took. Seven days. Not all the time, but just once a day I did my spinning and it awakened the life force. That's why they do the spinning, right? To awaken this amazing serpent within, to make it a dragon, to make it come out of our crown and head and to surround us like in the pictures of the Buddha and Shiva. That's what it is. And so this is from a Sufi tradition where they understood that the heart has a magnetic field that actually is very similar to the magnetic field of the earth. And so that's why this picture that actually comes from the teaching of Jose Arguelles, and it was the, I call him the father of harmonic convergence in 1987. And his teachings were absolutely spot on and still very much we are in the process of doing this, where we align our hearts with the heart of the earth. And, you know, we are electromagnetic beings. And what does that mean? It means that within our nervous system, we have electric currents, right? The same within our muscles and these electric currents create magnetism and so our magnetism is deeply connected to the magnetic field and the electromagnetic field of the earth so for the earth we will be working with her magnetic field but on a personal level we also want to have our axis aligned and so I know Divine Mother will give us step by step. We don't want to like overload <laughs> with what it is and how we do it. But breath will become our best friend in unlocking this great mystery within us. And I want to repeat one story, which I have told millions of times. But this story is so important to, again, what we're doing here. If you don't mind. You've heard this one before. But when I was four years old, I was visited by the grandmother from the stars from the Hopi, she called it Hopi tribe, but not from the physical tribe of the Hopi people here in Arizona, but actually from the stars, of course, because they originally came from the stars, like many of our native people did. And so when she came to me, you know, and I wrote this story, I actually want to share it maybe in the next email that I will send out, because it's a beautiful story with the details a little bit, you know, how I wrote it down, because these things are just so life-changing. And when she told me when I was four, then in this lifetime, we will basically crack open the walls that have been holding the high heart, the sacred heart, this heart of hearts, the holy of holies. We will crack the walls that have been holding this amazing portal kind of contracted and not fully open. We will crack that open. We will purify this high heart. And we will come into the perfect alignment with what creation really is. We will realize that our relationship, and Gurga, thank you. I just really love that Yogananda, you know, had all these great chants like God is beautiful and heart of hearts. That's so great because that's what it is. And so when she told me we're going to do it and, you know, she said it would happen through incredible incredible con divine confidence divine confidence and that we will change the relationship that humanity has with matter 
and that instead of being enslaved by matter and putting matter as something that controls us, we will be now restoring our relationship and remembering that we are the ones who actually are in charge of what matter is and what it becomes. So we are reversing that relationship. It's pretty incredible. You know, the experience was so incredible. I constantly communicate with my grandmother and my star people whenever I need any advice, of course. And so beautiful things are going to unfold here and keep unfolding, of course, until this is complete. When a person is able to fully, fully, fully activate this heart of hearts, they become as large magnetically as the earth herself and even bigger. The magnetic field actually expands so much. And this happened to me once. <laughs> I was meditating and I like to sometimes even meditate just laying down, you know. And so sometimes laying down is a great way to meditate. It connects you with different forces. When we lay down and meditate on our back with that pillow that I always recommend, and I'm working with someone now to actually create the perfect pillow that allows us to meditate on it laying down and also the same pillow allows us to travel out, out of body it has to be so perfect and so you know specific i'm testing it all out to see which one really works the best and so we will have have those tools and so I, in my meditation room i have a meditation chair and i have a meditation bed <laughs> and so on the meditation bed sometimes i listen to brain waves and i'm just you know laying down for 30 minutes kind of meditating in that deep state and it's wonderful instead of taking a nap you meditate laying down and so i was laying down one day you know and my dogs were around me they like to be on the same bed with me and so i'm just listening to brain waves and again the brain waves i will recommend in an email let me take a note so that i put it on in the they are about seven dollars the ones i use they are the most powerful ones i have ever found and so let me put that in the email so brain waves <clears throat> okay wonderful i need some water <laughs> So I said I would put one thing in the email as well. And what was that? So it was brainwaves and another thing. If anyone remembers the pillow we're still working on. Mm -hmm. The mudra, the story, thank you. Story and the mudra. Okay, I'm going to do that. Sunday Sagre. Hello, Olivia. Wonderful. Because when you're laying down and you're laying on your spine, you are also in that perfect alignment of your magnetic flow. And especially if your spine is perfectly aligned, which I will again be teaching, you know, in detail how to do this, then you can actually have these multidimensional experiences. It is all about your electromagnetic field. It is through your electromagnetic field that you connect to higher dimensions. And so one day, you know, just I was laying on the bed doing my brainwave meditation and as I was just totally empty, because that's the key, right? To be empty, no thought, no feeling, nothing, just nothingness, listening to brainwaves, complete silence within. Then suddenly my electromagnetic field and really the magnetic field exploded. I felt it explode. And as it exploded, it just went like boom to all of earth. And I know, Olivia, I think it happened to you too when you were teaching your class. So uh, this is what happens. And my dogs got shocked. They, all three of them really got touched by it. They felt it, right? It's, it's incredible. Yes, and the husband and wife, I was looking for it if I could find it. Mm -hmm. Okay, I will include that too. <clears throat> so basically, and I think Gurga told me that this happened, what Yogananda spoke about, that when we actually expand this electromagnetic field, which also happens, of course, through Kriya Yoga, for example, when we move the energy and move all of this, then if you guys are not receiving emails, please just try to subscribe again on our website. You know, I had to delete like thousands of emails. I, I <laughs> and so we are left with about... 1500 email addresses instead of what we had before and so just you know had to switch to a different system so it's it was a little bit of a mess but that's okay so just resubscribe thank you 
And so Yogananda spoke about this, and this is what we're going to do here today. And so to do it, we don't want to do anything without our pure intent, and I will speak about that too. I recently had an amazing meeting, as it always aligns, in this new lucid dream. We are now in a new lucid dream. This lucid dream, we have to learn how to operate it. Everything that you will have a pure intent about will happen, and very often instantaneously. That's my experience right now. And so the idea is that we have to listen to our soul, to our divine self. They are different, right? They are. We are all beings with many layers. So we have the layers of the many higher selves, the Christ self. We have a layer that we call the soul self. We have the layer that we call our uh, divine self, our I am presence. And all these layers of our being correspond with different layers of cosmic creation, our bodies that we have many of, the many layers, are connected to different layers of creation. And so, for example, our I am presence, our divine self, is connected to what we call cosmos. And then we have smaller layers, and they are still very big. And one is connected to the universe. Then we have another layer that is connected to the galaxy. We have another layer that is connected to our sun, the solar system itself. And so this is how these bodies come into being. They are connected to different layers of creation. And so our pure intent is when we don't just use our old human robot mind that we are dissolving. Remember, we are dissolving completely the robot, the mixer. You can call it a mixer. It was a mixer, you know, the identity mixer. You know, you are this, you are that. And you want to be this and you want to be that. And this is how old you are and so on. That's a mixer. But we want to be connecting only to the divine mind within us. And the divine mind does not operate on the principles of like, oh, this, this is what I want. This is what I need. This is what I desire because, you know, I want it. That all is the old mind that we are letting go of. The mind that we want to embody actually now fully and get to operate it, right? Well, we are we are just getting used to it, so it's okay. It's going to be a transition period. Is the mind that actually is a fully aligned with divine will. And it's not going to be like a logical conclusion that you make after you thought about what it is I want in life. It is something that comes to you as inspiration into the heart from your higher levels of being such as your divine self such as your soul such as your spirit it comes to you in a way also kind of out of nowhere it's not something that you just you know think about and then you say oh this is what i want need and should be doing none of that it comes when you ask for inspiration it comes as inspiration into the heart and it feels like love just spoke to you. It speaks through the heart. And so the pure intent is like that. I asked Divine Mother how else I can explain this. And she said, explain it like this. Pure intent is the intent of love. And before, you know, we've spoken about this. What would love do next? What would love do? What would I love? to do what would i love love is the pure intent and everything that is sent into the quantum field that now responds to us more than ever before now we have been cleared quite a bit so the quantum field now responds to love like never before for this civilization and so what you send out as i would love but i mean love not want not need not desire, you know, like the dirty desire. <laughs> we want to have the pure desire of the heart and then let it come to you because love is always immediately reflected back to us by the field. This is the most important for me teaching of Divine Mother about how to create. And she gave me a few examples this morning. And, you know, the example that we can use in this world is, for example, money or health. I know that all of us are familiar with those. And whether we have it or not, this is a good way to explain it. Let's say that we say, you know, a person is feeling sick and they hate it and they want to be healthy. 
and they start saying things like my disease, my condition. That is not the way to go about it, right? Because first we don't want to own any of it. So even changing the vocabulary that we use and simply focusing on only loving health. I love feeling healthy instead of saying I'm feeling sick and so I want to feel healthy. If we pay any attention to what we don't like, that too will have to actually become our reality. Divine Mother is a mirror. She is a perfect mirror. She will never mirror back to us what we are not. She will only mirror to us. She creates the reality for us, right? We are the ones who give her information. She creates it. So when we have something within us that is a conflict, the conflict has to be also mirrored back to us. That's why we want to clean up our inner conflict. We can only clean up the inner conflict through complete coherence between the heart and the mind, which means the heart leads the way and we only focus on what we truly love and what we truly would love. So it can be, of course, we talk about you know manifestation and that means there's always a slight delay in this world. So when you communicate with the quantum field, you want to come from a place of all love and then pick from the quantum field, what you would love. And just remembering not want, not need, no dissatisfaction, no conflict. So if a person is focused on being sick and they want health, they cannot fully have it, right? They must focus on, I love feeling healthy, which means, yeah, don't we? I love feeling healthy. It's a wonderful feeling to feel healthy. But they have to stop thinking about the fact that they right now might not be feeling healthy. So it's a big shift, right? Because we don't want to be trapped in this right and left, which is a trap. This is a trap. Divine Mother calls it the pendulum. Remember, she's been telling us for years. This is a pendulum that likes to swing from right to left, from good to bad, from sick to healthy. And as long as the pendulum is swinging, we cannot create what we want. We must seize the swinging, which is if we have any consciousness, yeah, 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 pain, right? So that's why we practice staring into the third eye to disconnect our senses even. We want to be masters. You know, Yogananda one day, and I know I shared this before, told me, you know, Come on, guys, we already are enlightened. We already achieved enlightenment. We are here to achieve physical mastery, which I first didn't quite understand what he meant because physical mastery to, to me, that was just about this body. But what he was saying, that is also how we create physical reality. We are absolutely creating physical reality. Only when we are master beings, we get really good at it, right? So then the reality starts looking really good for us. And so, you know, the theory, let's apply it though, let's apply it, you know? Yes, it's okay, we are relearning, right? But think about love, just love. Love, 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 focus on that. I love, I would love, but just make it a feeling of love. The feeling of love is the key. The feeling of love is the key. Think about someone that you really love or loved. Think about something that you really love. Just feel the feeling. Let's become familiar with the feeling. You know, I give an example, you know, if you had a relative where you felt such love for them, completely unconditional love, you know, like for me, it was my grandfather. I was so in love with that guy. <laughs> I'm sure he was like shocked. He was like, why does this child love me so much? But the thing is that hopefully we all experience the emanation of love and the emanation of love is the zero point in the middle. There is nothing else but love. There is no consciousness of lack. So when it comes to money, for example, in this world, right? Well, money became a way to get things, but we also want to think outside the box. And that means drawing to you experiences, drawing to you things, drawing to you the perfect conditions. You, you are so irresistibly magnetic when you are in the middle of things and all you know is love if all you know is love 
then love must be reflected back to you in all forms, the perfect conditions for your life, including things, right? And so I've tested this out again and again and again. And you get to a point where you have already everything that you ever could have wanted, desired from this pure heart's desire. And then you start working on the big things, right? For the world, for the cosmos, for the planet, of course, right? And so just test it out. Remember that Divine Mother taught us this with the elephant story. When you see suffering, and this was her story, you know, it doesn't surprise me because, you know, Divine Mother is often depicted with elephants, right? And so she took me to these baby elephants, you know, not even adult elephants, but it was baby elephants and they were suffering. And she said, look at them and then create the perfect conditions without feeling their pain. That was so hard. But when, she, when I did it, you know, I did it. So she took me out of body and she had me face those baby elephants. And this story is good to remember when you are creating your perfect life. Because she was saying, see it, look at it, but don't become it. Don't become it. This is the hardest thing to do, right? When you see suffering, don't become it. Don't become one with it, but see it, witness it, know that it exists, but don't have a reaction to it except for go into the oneness of all love give birth to that new condition from complete love as if nothing else could ever exist the suffering cannot be part of your consciousness even though you are witnessing it isn't that like to me yes be in the world but not of the world and yet create the perfect conditions from your heart be unaffected as you know, I think Patricia also made it the video the last few weeks, which was about being the peace commanding presence. It's actually peace and love. Love is the one that creates. And so any condition that you are facing, you have to be a master being. We all are remembering how to be, right? It's not always easy, but it's okay. One day it will be very easy. We are masters in becoming. And so here we are. Anyway. So let's go into this beautiful meditation. I haven't created the video just yet. And this is something that we will every day, we will be practicing and going deeper and opening the sacred heart. So here is the beautiful meditation that Myra recorded for us. And I was able to purchase beautiful music from a German artist who just created this amazing, amazing track that just is so powerful. And it's filled with geometry as tones and so let me find this and so again we want to go into pure intent pure intent that we are powerful beings with powerful hearts that are connected to the earth and that we out of love are assisting the earth in realigning her own axis the axis mundi and so again our intent is more powerful than anything else and it is love so let me find it here it is. Everybody is in beautiful, beautiful intent. The intent of love, service to Mother Earth. The transmission is about 20 minutes, I believe. Okay, 23 minutes. And so here we go. Align yourself with the Earth in love. And here we are. The immaculate concept of the axis of the Earth. We take a deep breath. We inhale deeply and exhale slowly. Every breath is our Father, Mother, God in action. We breathe again and with an open heart, we offer our love to our I Am Presence and the I Am Presence of every man woman and child on earth we feel love and its infinite splendor united in our presence we offer ourselves as a cup a holy grail in order to accomplish victoriously the divine plan the presences envelop all of us with great care our four bodies physical emotional 
mental and spiritual are relaxed and united, expressing the perfection of who we are. This unique moment is the grace. Our elemental beings, devas, sylphs, salamanders, undines, and gnomes are filled with joy. We feel totally surrounded by love and wisdom, deeply connected to our presence, I am, and the I am presence of all humanity. We are ready to participate in the great divine plan orchestrated since thousands and thousands of years ago. In the name of our mighty and resplendent divine presence, I am, we invoke Archangel Michael, Lady Faith, and their legions of angels. The sapphire blue light sparkles all around us and expands all over the planet. We invoke the directors of the five elements who take their strategic positions, north, east, south, west, and in the center of the earth. We now invoke Polaris and Magnus, who stand blazing as suns at the north and south poles. We invoke Sanat Kamara and Lord Gautama, who take their position above the earth. We invoke the solar logos and all the beings of light abiding in the realms of eternal perfection. We welcome these glorious beings of light and we send them our deepest gratitude. We contemplate this wonderful circle of light they form in the atmosphere of earth. We greet them and they do the same. One with all divine life, we create a wonderful chalice of light. As one breath, the majestic Polaris and Magnus stand ready. From their hearts, a magnificent beam of bright light embraces the entire planet. In tune with the heartbeat of all life, they breathe into the axis of the earth, a powerful shaft of light. The prodigious rays projected by Polaris and Magnus meet at the center of the earth. Instantly, they unite, forming a powerful sphere of light. This sphere of light becomes bigger and bigger and envelops the entire planet and expands even further. In the core of the earth, her threefold flame shines as a sun. The threefold flame of the planet is resplendent and its trillions of particles are spreading to the surface igniting the threefold flame of every man, woman, and child. All the archangels and Mother Mary join us in this merciful activity of light. All the beings of light blaze into the axis of the planet and into all life the splendor of the 12 attributes of our Father, Mother, God. The 12 rays of light twirl in the earth, around the earth, into the elemental kingdom, into the angelic kingdom, into humanity, and around every atom and electron forming the planet. Above the earth, the crown of the 12 Elohim is activated, glowing as never before. 
above the head of every man, woman, and child, the crown of the Elohim becomes shining in all its glory. Its radiation magnifies the beauty of the solar spine, allowing the solar chakras to blaze at an accelerated speed, straightening the axis of the earth. In this very special instant, the solar spine of every man, woman, and child is being aligned with the axis of the earth, the axis of the galaxy, and the axis of our Father, Mother, God. Polaris and Magnus hold the planet in their hands. Their heart is one with the heart of all life. The sound of the divine heartbeat echoes in the universe and all the kingdom of heaven chant the symphony of victory. The planet is experiencing divine fireworks whose source is the great axis of the divine cosmos. An infinite flow of shimmering light escapes from the center up to the north and down to the south, turning the earth into a magnificent star. Then Polaris and Magnus declare, Our beloved ones, we have been waiting for this moment for millennia. We rejoice today as never before. We rejoice because now you are aware of our dedicated presence. We rejoice because here and now, you know deeply the work we are doing to maintain the earth in her perfect orbit. We rejoice because now you understand how our precious ray of light allows our dear planet to be a part of the divine creation. We rejoice because the axis is shifting back to its perfect place. We rejoice because the adjustment of the axis will help you to become one with your divine self and one with the divine self of all life. We rejoice because your own solar spine is being restored into its original perfection. We rejoice because from now on, the veil of Maya can be dissolved forever. We rejoice because as we come closer to you, you will be able to hear clearly or feel our presence consolidating your solar spine and comforting each one of you. We rejoice because today the elemental kingdom can manifest again the splendor it was supposed to create on the surface of the earth. We rejoice because your deep desire to grow and ascend has led all of us to a new place where all beings are aligned in one breath and where enchantment is the order of the new day. We have long held for each of you the vision of this divine plan. This unprecedented accomplishment will stimulate so many facets of yourself, reconnecting you to your immense divine abilities. More than ever before, you are ready to fulfill perfectly your divine mission and the divine plan for all. Today, we invite you to call upon us often. Our answer will be instantaneous and together we will perpetuate the grace that has been taking place for decades and again today. We invite you to our flamboyant temples located at the north 
and the South Poles. There you will contemplate our work and your work. You will be overwhelmed by the greatness of every expression of life. As one brotherhood and sisterhood and by the power of one heartbeat, we will strengthen and strengthen again and again the axis of the earth and the axis of every man, woman, and child on the planet. Doing so, all beings will have the possibility to soar and become a pillar of love and light for all life. Can you feel this immense privilege? Can you see or feel the healing that is taking place? We confirm to you that this healing will restore the perfect DNA of every life form on earth. And as the DNA is recalibrated, all the information bundled within can come to your awareness and help you to see with new eyes and progress with new abilities. Remember, thousands upon thousands of years ago, you stood in your infinite resplendence. The time has come for humanity to stand straight again in complete harmony with the axis of all planets, galaxies, and suns. The time has come for humanity to stand straight again in complete harmony with the axis of all planets, galaxies, and suns. The time has come for humanity to stand straight again in complete harmony with the axis of all planets, galaxies, and suns. We promise you that by the straightening of the axis of the earth and your own axis, you and all the beings of all worlds will feel a significant shift in your bodies and in your daily lives. We are your guardians in this unique adventure. What a glorious moment. Thank you. The vision is breathtaking and we contemplate the supremacy of this moment. The straightening and strengthening of the axis allows the planet to evolve in a new octave of liberty and perfection. The light is so dazzling that it sublimates our hearts, our minds, and our bodies. As we absorb these high quality vibrations, we feel the divine unity that transcends all separation. We can hear the music coming out from the center of the earth and from the axis itself. Exquisite fragrances envelop all life. The dazzling radiation coming out from the axis is pure beauty. The comprehensive divine love of our Father Mother God takes command and orchestrates with the I Am Presence a symphony of glory that echoes into all particles of life and throughout the entire universe. Saint Germain and Lady Portia stand in the core of this activity. And through their open hearts, a bright stream of violet flame from suns beyond suns pours into every corner of the earth, transmuting all the residue of impurity still remaining on the planet. We become a magnet of love, a magnet of the divine perfection of our Father, Mother God. The divine attributes of the Almighty are pouring into our solar spine as an eternal cascade of light. 
As we integrate these virtues, we become pillars of light, one with the perfect axis of all things. We gaze in wonder at our mighty divinity, admiring our immaculate concept and the immaculate concept of all life. Marvelous paths of light are presented to humanity and we declare, I am my I am presence and I am one with all life. I am pure light, a precious child of our Father, Mother, God. I am my perfect axis in total harmony with sons beyond sons. I am the immaculate concept of my divine reality, a great co-creator who manifests the kingdom of heaven on earth. I am powerful and victorious in the light of God. Perfection blossoms everywhere and around all life as all hearts are aligned with all creation. We are one with the axis of all life. From now on, we declare, our pure and elevated thoughts will create worlds of happiness. Our lips will only express soft, enlightened, and uplifting words. Our ears will open to the music of the celestial spheres and to words of love. Our nostrils will welcome with gratitude the precious and vital air. Our sweet gazes, full of reverence, will transfigure all that they encounter. Our bodies will express elegance, majesty, and eternal youth. We rise with grace, and in our elevation, millions of souls rise with us. This divine alchemy is occurring in every man, woman, millennial, and child. The divine alchemy is occurring in the very earth itself. This moment is a miracle. The earth's axis is shining as never before. Humanity integrates and manifests even more the joy and the grace of the fifth dimension. We give thanks to our beloved Polaris and Magnus. We give thanks to all beings of light. We give thanks to our divine presence, I am. In a state of bliss, we know that this divine plan is perfectly accomplished as God's most holy name, I am. In one voice, we declare, I am that I am. I am my divine presence, which I infinitely love. Absolutely incredible. So for those of you who are seers, I know you saw what unfolded. This was the most important thing we have done on this planet and continue to do so. It always builds up. 
as we are always in love. The world guides us. This just changed the world. And we will work with the same invocation, visualization every single day of this lunar cycle. And again, we'll be guided if it needs more. But this was so incredible. I saw the DNA being actually activated in all life. Thank you. Thank you for your trust. Thank you for your love. I know people come and go and that's always okay. That's why all this is done for free so that people feel free to join and leave whenever they are done with the service. But I thank all of you who have been with us for a long time doing this work, building up, building up, building up because Divine Mother loves the opportunity when many of us gather in her name, in her love, in service, right? She blesses all of us equally. She is the mirror. So this work, I saw what unfolded, the beings who came. I hope that you guys feel and see the chills, the tears maybe even, the move that happened here. You know, we are aligning the axis mundi. Divine Mother told us this is the axis mundi. Look it up online. You will see pictures. The earth used to have the gates of heaven open. Everything that we know as yoga and, you know, all the great teachings already worked with the distortion. We, we were not aligned with the solar light. That's why we don't have the golden age. We are returning the earth to her golden age. So everything we have known, even the yugas, right? Even the yugas teaching, they all work already with the tilted earth. The reason why we did have Kali Yuga is the tilt of the earth. Everything that we know as the teachings that we thought were completely, you know, unquestionable forever, that will be changed when the earth axis no longer is tilted, when the magnetic flow is aligned. That is our golden age. No need for suffering. No need for darkness. You know, this is huge. So... I wanted to say a few things. I will turn it into an amazing video. Now, I wanted, I don't often, you know, even I try to email everyone who so generously donates to the work that we do, but just to let you know how the donations that you send are used. For example, I donate then everything as service to Patricia. The videos themselves, you know, it's thousands of dollars, even though it doesn't seem like it, to make a video because she used the work of other artists. You have to pay the artists. They create the clips, you put them together. And so what comes around goes around. So for this video, I will work with the artists to create actually an animation for us. Again, just using your generous gifts and always adding all that I have as well, you know, but just so that you know how I use this. And so, you know, to create a beautiful um, animation, because this video alone, we will do then one video that we will share with the world, of course, freely, as always, so that everyone can work with this. And this music also is so beautiful. I bought it, the license to it from a German, I think she's German, Lothoniel, I'm going to put her name, because she created this beautiful music, Lothoniel. And so when I heard this music, again, I wanted to use it, right, and to be able to use it. And so this is, you know, just so that you know, it's all about giving to the world. And then the world also gives us back with harmony, with peace, with love. And that's very much what it is all about. And so the big upcoming event, of course, we're going to have our equinox coming up. Hugely important event. There are several very important events throughout the year. The number one important event is winter solstice. So for us, December, December solstice. The next really important event on this planet are all the solstices. So the two of them, summer and winter and equinoxes because of the alignment of the earth, of course. The next event that is really important for planet earth is 8-8, eight, eight, not because the numbers itself, but because it's the lion's gate. The other important event for humanity, which is the last one, is actually 1111, which again has not much to do with the numbers, but it's a portal within cosmos that opens. And then for several days, we are receiving new information, new codes, new guidance. We are being activated in a whole new way. 
So yes, Myra's voice was absolutely, I mean, you know, it was guided. It always is guided, right? So we needed Myra's voice to do this. So it was absolutely incredible. So, so beautiful. So I'm so grateful for this beautiful co-creation. So thank you so much for being here. And if you feel guided and inspired, join us every day. We will do shorter events so that it's just focus on realigning this axis. But we always will also start each event by aligning ourselves. So remembering that love is pure intent. And so what would love do next is going with the flow. So thank you so much, all of you. Thank you.